one of one of the one of our concerns is that the data, uh, you know, good information in, good information out, uh, and, and we don't want it to be used in an improper way or an improper fashion, and that's why we, we want to give it to the EPA uh, to to verify or to to criticize. Uh, it's our hope that they will they will uh, be aggressive in following up our our testing. And we would invite them to do their their own testing uh, in a similar fashion or or in a in a different fashion to uh, to see if our data is good. So could you broadly characterize the, the findings? I mean, there's a guy who's done no coverage on this story. It's kind of hard to walk in cold turkey a little bit here. Right. But I mean, are you saying that your findings establish some proximate danger? Establish something that the, that the <coughs> community should be concerned about immediately? I mean, what can we say about it. It's produced something that's significant and important, whether the community at large is a danger. Uh, we're going to leave that to the EPA to, to make that determination, either with our results or with additional testing. Uh, again, it's, it's not our purpose to create a false danger. But if there is a danger with, with our results, which again are, are fairly significant, uh, we want we want it to be dealt with. Alan, who should be the government agency that's investigating on, on Whirlpool Park? It's been months since the PCBs are found there. You don't hear anything about an agency, a government agency, looking into the fact who dumped them, how long have they been there, what's going on, and also if there's even a connection between that or not. I mean, other than you guys looking into it, Ohio Health Department. I don't know if it's looking into it. The EPA, I don't know if they're looking into it. That's a very good question, and I can't speak for the EPA or the Ohio EPA or the Ohio Health Department. I can't speak, well, I can't speak for, for anybody except us. We've asked to be involved because we want to move the process along. Uh, as private citizens, we've been denied that right. I, I do know that the property owners are anxious uh, to have the testing, and they're not afraid of it, and, and they want to they, they wanna get it done also. And so I would assume that the holdup is is, uh, is somewhere between Whirlpool and, and the governmental entities. But that's, again, I'm on the outside looking in, wanting to get involved, asking to be, be involved uh, on behalf of these families, but so far I've been denied that opportunity. But hasn't that been uh, an opportunity that's been denied basically from way back to 2006? Yes, and that's why we, we started doing our own testing on, <coughs> on other issues uh, that we did have control over. Is it fair to say, Alan, that when you say significant and important, these findings that you've, you've made are leading towards perhaps a lawsuit of your own to file against a number of entities? If, if the interpretation and the analysis from uh, from our team of experts and possibly the the uh, EPA uh, bear some co kind of causal connection. Yes, so a lawsuit clearly is uh, in the future. And again, but we're not rushing to judgment. But with Mr. with Mr. Boyk on board, that is one of the purposes. Is is that's the potential now? Is is that these families file their own lawsuit? Uh, but again, we're we're not to that point yet. How many clients do you represent? How many families do you represent? Uh, we represent seven of the families that have had uh, uh, childhood cancers, and then uh, we represent five families who have had uh, cancer out by the park. So those don't include, include children. There's so a total of twelve families. A total of twelve. So seven child, five adults. Correct. And of those adults, there's also, we represent uh, some, they're now adults who are significantly mentally impaired. Um, but again, further study needs to be done, and we can't really do anything yet because we're waiting for the EPA to do their, their testing. You mentioned you did some testing in the victims' houses, and yes. you said other homes. What were those other homes? I'm, I'm the, I'm not going to disclose those um, out of fairness to those homeowners at, at this point in time. Can you quantify how many homes? Two. 
total of two homes? Two homes outside of the victim's homes. So 14 total. No, a, t a total of six. <coughs> I know you're not releasing the dust testing results. Uh, you're submitting them to the US EPA, state EPA. But at the same time, uh, it's been months and we've been trying to get involved uh, for information in the local park. How likely are you going to be to hear back from the EPA about these test results you're submitting to them? You're saying you want them to come out through your own testing. Right. I, th that's a very good question. Yeah. With the, the change in administration at the EPA, I, I don't know. I, I would hope that uh, this would take a higher priority. I think it should, uh, based on, on the testing that we've done and, and based on, on the park. Uh, it, it should be high on the priority list. And I, it's our hope, it's our family's hopes, that uh, the EPA, now that Lisa Jackson has, has left, the, the higher priority is put on it. Have you heard from Robert Indian, the lead investigator for the Ohio Health Department on this? No, we have not. We've sent a, a request to be involved and we were uh, bumped up stream to the, the US EPA and then we were told no. Have you had any contact with Dave Pollack and what is that relationship like? Um, all communication has been via email and it's been Mainly that they don't want that we're a nuisance. They act like we're a nuisance to them, and that's very frustrating. Well, expand on that. What, what have they done? Uh, they've told us that that uh, <coughs> they're responsible for uh, for the oversight. They're responsible for doing the work, and that we, like everybody else, uh, will, will have access to to the um, to the reports once the testing's done. And we found out about. And I apologize. Um, from the Sandusky County Health Department, there, there's been no interface at all. And so I misspoke there um, as far as uh, Mr. Pollock. Okay. But it's my understanding now that a lot of these cancer clusters have been turned back to the uh, county health departments. I don't, I, I don't know if this study of the cancer cluster has been, but I do know that that the EPA, the US EPA remains involved in the uh, Whirlpool Park. Well, Alan, you're the expert here uh, of all of us in this room. Can you tell us who you think, when it comes to a government agency, should be responsible in making a connection or not a connection between what's going on out of Whirlpool Park and the children? Absolutely. I mean, what agency would be responsible to do that, to look into that, ask Whirlpool for records and look into it? Well, I think that the US EPA has the right authority. The Ohio EPA has the right authority. I think the Sandusky County Health Department does also. Uh, and if I were in charge of any of those three entities, I would be asking uh, for the proof. Could you talk a little bit about the benefit of the legally unsophisticated here? The sort of the, again, just the perception here, sort of the jockeying here. I mean, I'm looking at a number of websites for law firms in Cleveland. And they've got their own little um, Clyde Cancer Cluster page, say, like, we're researching and we're getting on the case. Uh, I mean, what is the advantage of being the, the, the first to get a class action certified here? Uh, to, to be quite honest with you, I, I don't know. Um, because I don't know that there's a definable class yet. Okay. Uh, and and that's, I know that's a lot of legal jargon. But I, I wouldn't feel comfortable trying to define a class right now because there's so many. There's there's our dust testing. There's the testing out of the park where there's PCBs found. Um, there there's different types of, of we have children and we have adults, and so um, I, I don't know that there is any advantage. Which would be based upon the information on the table, lawsuit filed two weeks ago, possibly premature. Uh, Based on the information I have, I but I don't know what the Albrecht firm has. I don't know, the, you know, the experts they've retained. I don't know the testing they've done. I don't know the background that went into their lawsuit. Uh, we don't have access to that information, and so, based on the information we have, um, that that would be 
a concern. I can't say with 100% of the certainty that it was premature. I, I don't have their files. Mr. Brock, could you let me know your thoughts that you made at the outset a little bit more? I mean, you obviously are concerned about that first lawsuit and the motives underlying it. Well, I don't think I need to add anything more than what I did in that one paragraph. And, uh, and you're, you're welcome to my, my comments. I've got ten copies here that I'm happy to release to you. So at this point, no. I won't add anything to it other than what I've already said. You stand by. Okay. Sir, would you comment on the yellow ribbon that it represents? Just give me a second. Yellow ribbon is a uh, should be a reminder everybody in this room that uh, childhood cancer is very prevalent in this country. It may be a rare experience, actually cold. My wife has corrected me from the audience. <laughs> it's gold ribbon. Uh, it is the symbol for childhood cancer. Uh, members of my family and and some of you in this room some in the media, some of our friends, uh, continue to wear a gold ribbon every single day that we are about, out and about our business, our professional lives, as a reminder to us that this is not just something that happens. Childhood cancer is the number one disease killer of children in this country. The number one disease killer of children in this country. You know, we. It, I won't go any farther. I wanted to start to mention issues having to do with gun control, but I'm not going to go there today. Some other point I will. However, uh, our emphasis is always a knee-jerk reaction to many of the incidents that occur in this country, as opposed to being a, 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 a analyzed study. Childhood cancer has been prevalent for years. It's taken a back seat when it comes to funding from the federal government. And we wear it to remember Alexa and all those children across the nation and the world, for that matter, uh, who, have, who have developed cancer. And I would just remind everybody of the Ohio State study that indicates that this childhood cluster here, even though there's always going to be some childhood cancer, based on the population base and the types of cancer, that it's, there's a 90% probability that it's related to an external source, um, and that's and that's what we're looking for. Tom, I, I know you don't want to get into too many specifics, but did the dust testing show the presence of a carcinogenic substance? <coughs> and is the remaining questions that you want to have answered? You know, how significant the amount is. <coughs> how it got there and that sort of thing? Those are good questions and um, those are two of the questions we're asking ourselves right now and we're trying to get answers as quickly as possible and we want the EPA to answer them also. Did you find a carcinogenic substance? Um, we found something that is significant that, that we need to determine whether or not uh, there, there is a correlation, but as far as a known carcinogen, I, I can't say that. If I can squeeze another couple of questions, the the owners of the Whirlpool Park property, the Abdus, say that when they bought the property from Whirlpool, they were told the property was clean, and they were as surprised and upset as anybody to discover that that was not true. Are they one of the parties you were referring to? And you said there's some concern, some of the people named in this initial lawsuit shouldn't have been named. Yes. Any other questions or comments? Charles? Tom? I'm sorry, I had one more. I was curious whether your new co-counsel thinks the uh, Alberta lawsuit was premature and whether it was you think it was filed before a <coughs> causal connection had been established. I, I think, as Alan stated, um, we have no idea what information they have 
we don't know what experts they've retained, and we don't know what the legal basis or the causation is for their lawsuit. We just know what the evidence is uh, based on the studies that Alan and the families have done so far. So the answer to the question is, I don't know. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate your attendance. We appreciate your interest. And uh, we just remind everybody that this is being done on behalf of, of children that are have been very, very sick or are no longer with us. And that's, um, that's what we want to keep in mind here. So thank you.